I'm Mike Servideo, a live performance stores in the bowels of PPL Park. Uh, Union drop, another game to Columbus, 2-1. to one. Reaction? You can't concede uh, that early and, and in, of that quality at home. You just can't give up the first half the way they did. You know, we, we talked about it with Jim Curtin in the post game, whether it was too much respect or bad spacing. I think it was all of the above. This team did not come here prepared to play what against what Columbus was, was going to throw at them. And, and they said the right things in the locker room. Brian Carroll said that they were well prepared, but they weren't. You know, you, you looked at what they were doing, which was, you know, getting Finley to tuck in, overlapping with Awful, and then the crosses come in. Fabinho doesn't close down. Latou doesn't come back. And Vittoria loses Kamara. Both goals. I mean, it's, yeah, same recipe both times. You know, it, it's just not that hard to, to see it coming. And, and Columbus is an interesting team because when they're rolling, they are one of the best teams in MLS. But when they are not and they're sputtering and they're struggling, they're also one of the worst, which is why, you know, they're not well out ahead in, in the Eastern Conference, which given their talent and obviously the injury to Will Trapp at the earlier in the season affected that. But this is a team that can get on a roll, got on a roll, but then they always seem to come back to earth and the union, you know, near, nearly tied it up, but the, the hole was a little too deep. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what went wrong exactly in the first half. Um, you know, we like said both goals, kind of the same recipe coming down the, the Columbus right side, Kamara wide open for, for basically both of those goals. I mean, I don't how do, how does that happen? Yeah, I mean, Stephen Vittoria gets caught cheating. You can't you can't leave the leads the league's leading scorer. You just can't leave him alone to do what he did. You know that's where he thrives, getting up high. He had a couple other free headers that he couldn't get on goal, yeah. but you know, Vittoria won a lot of headers today. But that that's not enough. You have to be solid the whole way through. You have to chase him down and know where he is at all times. And you know, passing him off to Ray Gaddis isn't going to cut it because. Ray Gaddis isn't a great leaper. Ray Gaddis isn't great in the air. And he's, he, you know, what is, how many inches has he given away to Kai yeah. Kamara? Quite a few. Yeah. And so Kamara's going to win that battle. It's, it's, that's not going to be close. I think uh, Columbus ended with 65% of the possession in the first half. Was it just too conservative from the union? Was Columbus that good on the ball? What did uh, you see? Jim Curtin made the point that they could have pushed Noguera higher to try and take care of, of Will Trapp. But when you look at the numbers and you see Will Trapp with plus, you know, above 90% pass completion, and this is more of an issue, is Iguain with higher than 90% uh, success with his passes, that, that's a bad stat. Yeah. And, and Brian Carroll is a very good defensive midfielder when he can sit in and, and cut off entry passes, when you're trying to ping balls through a defense. But with a team like Columbus that's moving everybody in and out and cycling the ball and cycling the players, passing and moving the way they did, that, that takes him out of his comfort zone, and, and he can't keep up with that kind of pace. So Columbus had what they wanted to do because they defend in that 4-4-2, they push Higuain up, and they flatten out Trap and Chani. But the second they get the ball, the fullbacks get forward, Trap drops between, and it's a, essentially a 3-5-2 going forward, yeah. and, and, or a 3-6-1, whatever you want to say. But Trap drops in, you know, Chani sits in the middle, and, and then you have so many extra numbers, and it creates overlaps, which the Union didn't really handle. Um, you know, it was much more obvious uh, down the Union's left flank with Fabinho being 1v2 a lot of the game because, you know, Sebastian Latou isn't a disciplined player. You know, he pops up where he pops up, you know, made a, one, made a good play to sort of bowl over Chani. Uh, quest, you know, questionable whether that was a foul or not, but bowls over Chani, uh, shows more strength, and, and wins the ball, creates the goal. Great. But there's plenty of times where he's wildly out of position and you're leaving Fabinho, who himself isn't the best at his defensive positioning, to, to go 1v2 and make, you can't make him make that decision. Yeah. You know, he has to take who he wants and pass off the guy he wants. And he didn't have that option enough, which is why Harrison Offal was as open as he was for a lot of those crosses. Yeah. Um, so the Union did grow into the game in the second half. Uh, CJ Sapong scores his eighth goal of the season, cuts the lead to 2-1. to one. Sebastian Latou has one that goes off the crossbar. Uh, Tranquillo Barnetta has a, a late free kick that goes into the wall. What was better about the second half, and why wasn't it enough? When the Union get going forward and, and when Columbus gets on their back foot, they get awfully scrambly. You know, they, they, they don't have the space to pass around in the back, which they like. Um, and they get th – those fullbacks are not defensive fullbacks. You know, the, the, the book on awful is if you let him get forward, he's going to kill you. If you press him and can pin him back, then you can really go after him, which, which they did in the second yeah. half. And the same on the other side. Waylon Francis is not the, the most competent defender, which yeah. is why he got he hauled off. Um, 
So the union got a little more pressure forward, and I, th I think what was happening was in the first half when they went forward, they, got, they let themselves get stretched. That accordion kind of stretched out as the front line went and chased too deep, yeah. and it opened up the middle of the field. I think in the, in the second half, they walked the whole team higher. Uh, so those center backs starting at the back pushed everybody up. So, you know, Sapong or Casey or, or Barnetta, whoever's chasing up front, doesn't have 30 yards behind them to the next guy. Maybe it's 15. And I think that helped so that those little balls that were just sitting in the middle of the field and, and Columbus was scooping up in the first half – suddenly the union were winning them, and, and they were able to hold on to the ball the way that Columbus was in the first half. Yeah. Uh, union rolled out the same team that beat San Jose last week. Um, maybe a little bit of a strange move to keep John McCarthy in goal with Andre Blake coming back from international duty. Read anything into this going forward? Yeah. Or is it just Tim Tired? Or? I, I believe it was the wrong decision. Uh, Andre Blake has shown that he is a much better goalkeeper. Um, and, and the logic that Jim Curtin gave was that McCarthy was with the team you know, throughout the week where Blake yeah. was getting back a little late. I don't think that matters. I think the quality of Blake's goalkeeping speaks for itself, especially compared to McCarthy's. And, and while he may not have necessarily been at fault on either of those two goals, he certainly didn't do much to help himself or help yeah. keep the ball out of the net. So, and, and who knows if Blake makes either of those two saves. I, I think he probably you know, has, has a little better positioning and either yeah. cuts a ball off or, or, or can you know, put Kamara off. Um, once the ball's through to him, it's, it's game over. But yeah. it, it sets up a very interesting decision for Jim Curtin. I, I fully expect Andre Blake to be back in net against Houston. Yeah. Um, and for my money, it's his job to lose. Yeah. Um, Blake should be playing the rest of this season, not just because he was the number one pick, but because he's a full international and he's a very good goalkeeper. Um, McCarthy has had some solid games, made a couple of nice saves tonight, but he just he doesn't have that – athleticism and that ability that Blake does. Well, I, th I think what you said, you know, hard to blame McCarthy on either goal. I mean, you have one of the best goal scorers in the league, Camara, you know, within five yards of the goal both times. But we've seen Andre Blake make a couple of really just like save of the week type caliber saves. Is that, I think, I think that might be the difference between the two right now. It's but just that, that he pulls out those, those saves that maybe he's not supposed to you make. You see it on the other side. You see what Steve Clark did. You know, Barnetta had a couple of really good looks. Latou yeah. had the good look that, that he was able to push off the post. Yeah. That's what a great goalkeeper gives you. You yeah. know, Clark is good with his feet. He, he moves the ball the way that Greg Burhalter wants him to move it. But at the end of the day, he makes the saves. Yeah. Uh, and, and, he probably didn't have too much business making that Latou save off of the off of the crossbar, yeah. and, and that's a save that, that wins you points. Yep. Um, McCarthy had one flying to his left that could have been three to one, um, or maybe it was it was three nothing at the time. I think it was three. I think it would have been three to one. Yeah. But uh, had it gone in. <laughs> However, uh, you just you don't get that sense that McCarthy is going to come up with that big save in close, yeah. and that. You know, when it gets tight and it gets really deep into his area, his footwork gets a little shaky and he starts to stumble around. And, and you know, on, the, on that second goal, he's, he's in the net. You know, yeah. he, he's in the net before that ball arrives yeah. because his footwork didn't sort of take him out into the field to, to make a strong play. So it's no knock on him. I mean, he is still a first-year professional who, mm -hmm. who has, you know, this is not saying anything negative about him. It's just... For me, Blake is is in the lead for for both the starting job and the Open Cup final. Sure. Um, Chaka Madonna served his second game of the, the two game suspension tonight. Uh, Marisa Du pushing to come back. Andrew Wenger. Um, I think I think it was a knee strain. Probably pushing to come back next week. How does this team change going into the game against Houston? Yeah, we had a question on the, the hashtag AskPSP, and thank you for for sending those in um, about whether Mo changes this game if he replaces Vittoria. And it's, it's a tough one because Vittoria won a lot of balls in the air tonight, um, and Mo has gotten lost on, on some aerial challenges. And, and Mo versus Kamara, that's, that's, you, still, you still give that to Kamara in a leaping, hitting contest. So I think they would have been more composed out of the back. Yes, I, mean, I think very you know, much. It, it's hard to see Vittoria being a consistent starter because even though he's played better lately, his first move is still to just whack the ball out of bounds, which is, which is a, a JV move. You know, at, at some point, you have to accept the fact that blocking the ball is the bare minimum. That's, that, that isn't the end of your job as a, as a defender. You need to control the ball. You need to give your, chance, your team a chance to A, rest, and B, get forward. 
And when you see as much as you see with whether it's Gaddis, whether it's Marquez, but specifically Vittoria, great, you blocked off a cross, but why did you why did you send it into row Z when you could have just trapped it? No one was around you. Or, yeah. or you could have directed it up the field to one of two guys who were waiting for it. And that's the part I think where, where Maurice do makes such a big difference for this team is that, you know, sometimes it makes it's a little nervy to ha see him dribbling the ball, but he'll take the ball down, he'll get his head up the field, and he'll make a pass. Where Vittoria plays it a plays it so safe that the ball's coming back at the Union, you know, in a snap. Where do you see Madonna coming back into next week? Um, I think Tranquilo Barnett has probably had two of his best games since joining the team the last two weeks in the center of the field. Um, so I, I think the expe expectation would be that Eric Ayuk probably comes out on the left, but who plays on the left next week? Is it, will it be Jocko? Will it be I Barnetta? Be, I would expect it to be Barnetta. Yeah. I, I think, you know, Barnetta had, had two of the best looks uh, in this game, getting forward and, and taking shots on, but, you know, and fair play to Columbus. They really were able to push him uh, and, and keep him out of the match. Yeah. And so the extra energy and defensive energy that you'd expect from Barnetta, it really – he lost his area uh, to, to Will Trapp. Will yeah. Trapp completely won that. He was very good tonight. Um, yeah, he was excellent. And so uh, I don't believe Barnett has done enough to unseat Maidana yeah. because you, you need scoring from the wing. And, you know, Eric Ayuk was, was really energetic and up for this game. But the, the thing I want to see from him is not, great, you got contact, go down and win a foul. Because, you know, he won, what, five, six fouls tonight? All of them were within 10 yards of the mid of midfield. Yeah. That's not going to convince your defender not to keep fouling you. Yeah. Um, so he, I want to see him take that next step where if you push the ball beyond a guy and he obstructs you, bowl him over, run past him, make him grab you, give up, you know, go get that ball. Because if you get behind him, then there's a scoring chance. If, if you go down and win that foul, great. Your, your stats for fouls, fouls suffered goes up. But the union are just going to take that quick tap and you haven't gone anywhere. So I would expect... I'm not going to say what I would expect because, you know, Jim Curtin brought Barnetta here to play in the middle of the field. Um, I think it's the right move to put Barnetta back out wide. I think that Barnetta and Maidana were starting to develop a chemistry, rotating, switching, yeah. linking, linking up. I would put Barnetta back out wide with Maidana in the middle of the, of the pitch where he, he does lead the league in assists. Yeah. Uh, we'll do one last question because we got this question uh, on Twitter, and I think it's a question that I've asked either you or Kevin for every week for the last six. Is the Are the playoffs gone? Nope. <laughs> nope. No, they're not. Yeah. The Union, as of this recording, are one point out of the playoffs. Yeah. Montreal, Montreal has, better today. has four games in hand. They'll still have four games in hand after tonight. They're, going to, they're at L.A., then they're at San Jose. And they need to prove that they can win and yeah. make the most of these point uh, of, of these games in hand because games in hand are nothing until you take those points. It's it's pathetic in terms of the Eastern Conference that the Union can have as few wins as they have and still be in the conversation. But no, strangely, the playoffs are not out of out of reach. And and if they can get a result against Houston and if they can get on a little roll, you know, Orlando's toast. Orlando made the decision. We're, we're all offense, but without offensive players, and now they have by far the worst yeah. uh, goal differential in the league. They're, they're not going anywhere. Um, Jason Kreis has said all he needs to about the state of things in New York City, yeah. and Chicago is garbage. Yeah. So, you know, those three teams, they really shouldn't catch the Union. The Union should be sitting in that seventh spot looking to take any, you know, take wins from every one of these games, and that means – going for it never yeah. playing for the draw going for it and, and you'd like to see that i, I really you know that houston's going to be an interesting challenge yeah um a team in the western conference who's out of the playoffs themselves but you know can can really play can beat people up in the mid in the middle of the pitch and yeah. and that'll be a, a fun bruising game to watch uh so no the playoffs are not out until montreal can prove that they can win more than one game in a row no the playoffs are not out of reach Okay. Which is a crazy thing to say. <laughs> I think it is. Uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, we'll be back here next Sunday, 7 p.m. for uh, Union versus Houston.